highest and best offer, what they mean, and how to choose from multiple offers on house. That's our topic today. We'll get started right after this. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kim Ward. I am a real estate broker in San Diego and an expert with helping executors, administrators, and trustees with homes in probate or a trust. You know our market has been wild and now we have situations with the seller trying to figure out highest and best offer, what they mean, and how to choose from multiple offers on house. Perhaps no situation facing buyers and sellers is more overwhelming, potentially frustrating, especially for misunderstanding and perhaps missed opportunity than presenting and negotiating multiple offers. These offers are competing to buy the property. In today's market, it's very possible that you're being faced with multiple offers, multiple buyers wanting to buy the home that you're responsible for. Frankly, I think it's a great thing to have multiple offers, especially when you have someone who can really explain your options when dealing with these many offers. Your listing broker can explain the various negotiating strategies that you should consider. For instance, you could just simply accept the best offer, or you can inform all potential home buyers that there are many offers on the table and invite all of them to make their best offer. You could just counter offer one and put the rest of them in the backup position while you wait for a decision by that buyer on the counter offer that you're sending. You could counter multiple offers. That's personally my favorite. We would then wait for their response and then we choose one and we reject all the others. Now when I say reject, I mean we send an email letting them know that an offer has been accepted and how much we appreciate their hard work. I always like to do this because it is a lot of work for buyers, agents to view the property after they find the property for their clients, schedule viewing the property, view the property, and then write the offer and then follow up. So I always like to be polite and send a thank you for all your hard work email. I just finished this morning speaking with my client, Sean, and he is representing his uncle's estate in the Linda Vista area of San Diego. I presented to him using my multiple offer sheet, the 18 offers that we have received. After speaking with him, we decided to counter offer, seller multiple counter offer, three of the best offers. And we'll be sending those counter offers to Sean to sign. And then we will send it off to all of those three buyers agents and see what their response is. Most likely, at least two of them will agree to the counter offer that has various terms that I wanted to make sure to have clarity around. And then tomorrow morning around 1030, I will speak with my client, Sean, and we will choose the buyer that we're going to move forward with and hold the other offer from the other buyer as a backup. To manage what could become unmanageable, I developed a multiple offer sheet. That way it's easy for me to present in one sheet, usually in person or today because of the coronavirus, we are doing it by Zoom. So I shared my screen and went through each one of the offers on the multiple offer sheet so that Sean could really see what people were offering. There were some cash offers and some offers where the home buyers needed to get loans. The higher priced offers were with loans and there will be an appraisal on the property, which will take a little bit longer but it was a $40,000 difference between the highest cash offer and the best offer with a loan. So of course, we're just going to go through that process and hope that the appraisal comes in and also that the buyer wants to continue forward after they do their inspection. So the multiple offer sheet really helped Sean to see and to be able to compare the benefits of each of the competing offers. And that's how we decided to go forward with the offers at the highest price with loans instead of going with cash offers. If you'd like to see that multiple offer sheet, we have a link down below that you can see how I put it together and how it will help you when you are the person responsible for looking at all the offers to be able to differentiate 
the pros and the cons of each offer easily instead of having to look at all of the California Association of Realtors documentation, which is 12 or more pages to read through. So it, it's a nice concise way that we put this together for you. So I'm sure you realize, based on what I shared earlier, of the different approaches that you can take, that each of these approaches has its advantages and its disadvantages. Sometimes patience can result in an even better offer received. When we invite buyers to make their best offer, we call it your highest and best offer. It may produce better offers than those that are currently on the table or it may discourage the buyers and they may choose to not go forward with the idea of purchasing the home and move on to looking at other homes. And as your listing broker, of course, I will explain the pros and the cons of the different strategies that we could take, including how the negotiating strategies work. The decision, of course, is always yours to make. You'll appreciate that my advice is based on past experience, a lot of past experience, and there's no guarantee that any particular buyer is going to come through as we would hope they would, and that they'll react in a particular way. So you might wanna consider the following dynamics. Sellers, of course, wanna get the highest price and the best terms for the home, while buyers wanna get the lowest price and the most favorable terms for them. Listing brokers on behalf of their seller, we represent the seller's interests. Whereas the buyer's agents, they represent the best interest for their buyer clients. I've been asked about disclosing the actual price and terms of other offers if that would get the seller a better price. And sometimes the answer is absolutely yes. I recently was helping Mike with his brother's home in Ocean Beach. We recently put this home, this 448 square foot tiny little home on 2,500 square foot lot that's five blocks from the beach, put it on the market at $650,000. Based on the comps that I pulled up, that's what we agreed to, Mike and I, to put the property on the market at $650,000. By the time I was done manipulating slash negotiating, the property sold cash in 14 days for $775,000. The way I did this was disclosing where the number was going on the purchasing of this property. We had 15 offers, I think. The nearest next offer was $730,000 and I sold it for $775,000. As you can imagine, Mike was pretty outrageously happy. So what's fair, what's honest? Why isn't there a single, simple way of dealing with competing offers? Knowledgeable sellers and buyers realize that there is never a clear cut answer on how these things are gonna go because these are complex situations. But some fundamental principles can really help with the negotiating in these types of situations. And we can make it as simple as possible for you. And that's where that multiple offer sheet comes in that's the beginning of the discussion. And again, realizing that the listing agent or broker represents the seller's interest while the buyer's agent represents the buyer's interest. We real estate professionals, we're subject to state real estate regulations. And if we are realtors, we have to abide by the code of ethics. The code of ethics is drawn up by the National Association of Realtors. And it says that we are to be honest with all parties to present offers quickly and counter offer quickly and objectively and to cooperate with other brokers. That cooperation involves sharing any relevant information. Frequently, I've heard of agents and I've experienced this myself when my team are helping a buyer and there's no communication from the other side as to where our offers are at. You know, we are hired also to represent buyer clients from time to time and of course we want to know once we send in an offer so that we can then inform our buyer the status of their offer. As a listing broker, I always make reasonable attempt to let everyone who has written an offer on behalf of their buyer know 
where we're at, like when we're gonna present offers to the seller, when they can expect a response from the seller. And finally, buyers and sellers need to realize that only one buyer is going to be the happy buyer of the home. Only one offer can result in a sale. And the other buyers often are very disappointed, especially in this market. I have actually heard of buyers having written upwards of 30 offers and not receiving a counter offer. While little can be done to handle that disappointment for those buyers, fair and honest treatment through the process and the negotiation process, coupled with prompt communication by me and my team, can enhance the chances that all buyers, whether they're successful or not successful, will feel they were treated fairly and honestly. That's how we do the business here, and I hope you found it of value. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, hit the bell button to be notified of my weekly videos, especially if you're involved in a probate or a trust administration right now. You're gonna wanna watch all the videos that I have because that's what it's all about, probate and trust administration. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.